Thank you, Mr. President. I want to uh, really thank uh, my Senate colleague uh, from Delaware, Senator Coons, uh, for his extraordinarily eloquent and, frankly, urgently passionate voice on issues of solitary confinement and, frankly, uh, for all the work he's doing on criminal justice reform as a whole. This bill uh, that he and Senator Durbin have worked so hard, that I'm so proud to join along with Senator Franken, this bill um, is a critically important bill when it comes to the overall reforming of our criminal justice system. And please understand, as he has said, this is currently a practice in our federal system as well as in state prisons. And it is an archaic and damaging and ineffective and inefficient practice that actually works against the public interest, not just their financial interest, but even in the safety and the well-being of our communities. Now, the solitary confinement, many people don't know exactly what we're talking about. As Senator Kuhn said, it's people being kept in a prison cell for 22 to 24 hours a day with little to no human interaction. As Senator Kuhn said, it's the fact that on any given day, we now have 80,000 to 100,000 incarcerated people in state and federal prisons who are being held in such conditions, in rooms often no bigger than a parking spot. We know that inmates placed in solitary confinement, as Senator Kuhn said, can be put there for the most minor of infractions, for literally just filing papers with the court to try to assert their constitutional rights. We also know that solitary confinement is extraordinarily expensive, more expensive than non-solitary confinement. In fact, on average, it costs about $75,000 each year for an individual to be housed in solitary confinement. And yet it's increasingly clear that this overuse, especially for low-level offenders, not people who've done violent crime, not people who have assaulted a security, a, 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 a correctional officer, but people who are there for low-level, nonviolent crimes, we know that this is providing little benefit to no benefit for the public good. But what's extraordinary is it's creating conditions in which can inure to the public harm. Solitary confinement has irreversible effects on the human brain which may lead an inmate to harm themselves or others. It does psychological damage. It can do serious psychological damage, making a person more dangerous. So here we have a correctional system that doesn't correct, but actually is doing more harm and putting people in a position where they could be more dangerous to themselves, to their fellow inmates, and to society as a whole. It makes no sense. And international bodies understand this. Other nations, for some populations put in solitary confinement, have referred to it as torture. The United Nations considers long-term isolation to be cruel and degrading treatment. Here we are, the United States of America, which I firmly believe is a symbol to the nation, to the globe, of justice, righteousness, decency. But yet we're engaging in tactics that our peer nations, many of them, consider cruel and degrading. We know the data. It is clear that isolation actually worsens mental illness and can actually create issues in those who were previously seen as psychologically healthy. Researchers estimate that at least 30% of inmates held in solitary confinement already have a mental disorder. So this is how we are treating mental illness. We incarcerate not just the poor, but we incarcerate the addicted and the mentally ill. Those populations in prison, should, we should seek to make them better, healthier, to deal with their disease or the mental disorder. But yet we are routinely doing practices that aggravate this. We know that data holding isolation not only makes this mental illness worse for the individual, but, 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 but portends of truly negative impacts on their lives, the lives of their families, and the communities when they are released. We know that while confinement for short periods of time may be necessary for safety, please understand that the security of our correctional officers is critical in prison environments. But to allow practices that go on 
It actually doesn't make our correctional officers safer. It makes their jobs more dangerous and puts them at greater risk. This is why correctional officers across the country are speaking out, the very people that have to, to, to conduct the work in our prisons are speaking out against solitary confinement. One Texas correctional officer said, when you cut our social interaction, when you cut out social interaction, you're dealing with a person who has nothing to lose. And that's extremely dangerous. Kevin Kempf, the director of the Idaho Department of Corrections, remarked that reforming the practice of solitary confinement is not a soft on inmates approach. This is a public safety approach, he says. He refers to a time in 2014 when 44 inmates were released directly from isolation in a maximum security prison and out to the public. That means that they were released, as a case that Senator Kuhn said, from solitary confinement, from these conditions of no social interaction, from an environment that researchers deem aggravating to mental illness, and they go right from that solitary confinement environment out into the public. He remarked about this case that the 44 inmates, we took belly chains and leg irons off of them and they walked into your community. That is irresponsible of me as a director. Frankly, our taxpayers should expect more of me, should expect more of our staff to do things differently. It should come no surprise to any of us that the use of solitary confinement has received criticism both from law enforcement folks, folks who have sworn oaths to protect the public, as well as civil rights, civil libertarians, the medical community, and the legal community. Just last year, in a Supreme Court case, Davis versus Aliyah, Justice Kennedy denounced this widespread use of solitary confinement in prisons. Justice Kennedy cited a litany of the possible side effects from prolonged isolation, including anxiety, panic, withdrawal, hallucinations, and self-mutilation. After examining the evidence, Justin Ke Kennedy concluded that ample, and I quote, research still confirms what the court suggested, suggested over a century ago, years on end of near total isolation exacts a terrible price. The penal system has a solitary confinement regime that will bring you to the line, to the edge of madness, perhaps into madness itself. This is not a criminal justice system that reflects our highest values. It doesn't stand for moral right when you're exacting such cruel punishment <clears throat> that doesn't just do punitive damage, but also, but also puts an inmate in a situation where they could cause more harm and damage to themselves and others. And so the bill that Chris Coons talks about, the bill that we're introducing would substantially limit the ability of the Bureau of Prisons to use solitary confinement in federal facilities. The bill would mandate that solitary confinement be limited to the briefest terms under the least restrictive conditions practicable. And it would it could preclude the BOP, the Bureau of Prisons, from placing vulnerable populations in solitary confinement, like minors, like children, and as well as people with serious mental illness, physical disabilities, and pregnant women. And critically, this legislation wants to promote more data collection. The bill would require the Bureau of Prisons to collect data on the use of solitary confinement, and it would create a natural resource center on solitary co confinement reform under the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Look, this is an issue, the issue of solitary confinement that has been a priority for me here in the Senate from my beginning months. In fact, over a year ago, in August of 2015, I worked with members of the Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Government Affairs on an oversight hearing to explore current practices at the Federal Bureau of Prisons. I requested this hearing because of the urgent need 
to shine a spotlight on our broken criminal justice system, including what occurs within the walls of federal prison that the general public does not see, that's being done in the name of the public. The hearing was a good first start to improve transparency on solitary confinement. At the hearing, we heard a testimony from a wide range of stakeholders, including the head of the Bureau of Prisons and advocates. Udi Ofer from the New Jersey ACLU testified that, I quote, our nation has seen a dramatic increase in the use of reliance on solitary confinement over the last couple of decades. I also introduced the Mercy Act a bill that would prohibit the use of solitary confinement on youth adjudicated delinquent in the federal system unless it is a temporary response to a serious risk of harm to the juvenile others. Our justice system must ensure justice in the deepest, richest meaning of that word. It's what we swear an oath to, that we will be a nation of liberty and justice for all, not just some, but for all, and it means that we need to begin to expose the practices that are happening in our prisons and understand the consequences to all of us. Increase financial expenditures, increase risk to our security and our safety, increased risks of recidivism. Our justice system should not be engaged in practices that people across the spectrum in America, politically, medical leaders, and others, really do view as harmful and inefficient and ineffective. I'm proud to sponsor the Solitary Confinement Reform Act. I urge my colleagues to support this bill and advance it in the Senate. I thank the leadership of Senator Coons, but this is a time where we need national urgency on this issue. There's something unfortunate about what happens in our prisons as if being something that, hey, we as a public wash our hands, throw them away, throw away the key. That kind of logic doesn't solve problems. It perpetuates them. It doesn't make us safe. It makes us less safe. It doesn't save us money. It costs us more. These kind of practices undermine the foundations of common sense as well as moral rectitude. We stand for more than this as a country. We should set an example that ultimately, as a nation, we are not about retribution. We're not about disproportionate punishment. We are about restorative justice. Solitary confinement as a practice being done now is an assault on justice. It is an offense to our moral values as a nation. It calls for reform. And I'm proud to stand with my colleagues today to introduce legislation that begins us down that important road to justice for all. Thank you.